Now for the show that's truly too hot to handle. It's the Melting Pack, and it starts right now. Thank you, The Melting Pat. Here's your host, Pat Johnson. All right, well, thank you, Jerome. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the show, The Melting Pat, the next level network. How are you? Are you well? You doing okay? I am uh, a little subdued today on purpose. I don't want to be screaming down here because I think the boy just fell asleep upstairs. So um, we are celebrating. I know it's not going to sound like it, but we are going to celebrate today because... If you don't know, if you don't keep track, if you don't read the uh, the titles I put up there, it's fine. I don't, I don't expect you to. But this episode that's coming out today is episode number 400. Yes, sir. I know it's going to sound weird with a fanfare after I... But, you know, things happen. So yeah, 400 episodes of this goddamn show. We'll talk about it at the end. Um... To, well, before the sports, because we got some mail too. So we're going to talk about how crazy it is that I've not been canceled. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's insane. Yeah, we're going to get to it because we got other stuff to do and uh, we're short on time. So today I have a story for you. It came out actually last year. The story came out about a, some legislation that passed in a town about Starbucks workers needing to work faster. So we'll talk about that. We have some mail for you. We have some sports stuff. And that's it. Other than this first thing, uh, patrons got a bonus. We talked about a just a dumbass challenge that's going on this month. So uh, subscribe, sign up for that. patreoncom slash the melted pat. You can. Uh, it's I set the thing at five bucks a month, but apparently you can do it for less than that. You can pledge for less than that. I guess I don't know how that works, but thanks for your money either way. patreoncom slash the melted pat. Bonus stuff. Uh, I'll do some videos at some point. But audio only going forward. I explained it in the thing. So there we go. All right. Um, yeah, so we do have some sports. We have a, a thing with Starbucks and a, a town just mad that they can't get their coffee fast enough. And then uh, we got some mail. So we'll talk all about that. We'll do the things. But the first thing, I got permission to talk about this a couple weeks ago. And then, well, my schedule got a little wacky with uh, all the things going on connected to it. And then we've had some guests and whatnot. So my smoking hot wife is going to be a surrogate. She is renting out her womb to a couple and uh, we're in the pro well me like I say we because the agency kind of wanted me to be more involved than I thought they would. Like I had to be in on the process because apparently I, what I learned is that some husbands are not comfortable with their wives renting out their uh, their uteruses. So I guess they're prepared for that actuality when, when guys really get into the conversation and go, here's what's going to happen. And I had no qualms about it whatsoever. I said, okay, sounds great. This is something that Jill's been talking about for a couple of years now. She was talking about this, like, hey, I kind of want to see, I kind of want to be a surrogate. Like sometimes people can't, she will not like, hey, I can do this because you have to have kids of your own first. You have to be done having your own kids. Which makes sense because they have they want to make sure that you can go through with a pregnancy. You know, it can be, um, let's call it complicated at some parts with some people. So they want to make sure you do that. So that, you know, check that box. And then, you know, she's talked about it like, hey, I want to do this. I want, you know, someone who wants to have a kid, but for whatever reason can't. She's like, I want to be the person who can help them. Never mind the fact that she's getting a lot of money and it's going to help us. Um, but that's not like, that's not, not a part of it, right? You get people like, oh, she's got such a big heart. Well, yes, she does. I wouldn't have married her otherwise, but you know, also the, <laughs> the financial compensation is a big part of it too. So it's going to be really helpful with that. And I don't know how much I can say about the family, so I won't, but it's all through an agency. It's all, um, cause some people have raised concerns with how this is going to work. And it's all through an agency. The money goes into a trust. So at no point can, like the money has to already be there when we sign the contract. It's a whole legal process we all have to go through and we got to do some other things. So the money that she's being paid is in a trust account managed by a third party. So at no point 
can the family say, no, we don't want to pay for that. Like, that's not a thing. Like, it's all legally binding. It's all, uh, all that part is taken care of. So yeah, that's, the, that's also the reason why you might be getting some bonus episodes of the show in case she has to do some traveling and, or if I have to do some traveling. So yeah, it's either, cause then it's either I do the show down here while someone else is upstairs with the kid and I scream at myself like a psycho for 40 minutes. And that's not a thing that I want someone else to have to listen to. So uh, I've got a couple in the can or we're doing some interviews or whatever. So we're going to have some stuff for you um, in the near future, I think. So yeah, that's uh, that's part of the reason why the scheduling with the show and whatnot has been really crazy because appointments for her, for all of us and the kiddo complicates that thing. So yeah, so that's why um, we're getting a little, hold on trying to move this footrest here that I have and it's not working out. I'm sitting in the chair in like a weird angle because it's the only spot I'm comfortable. So sorry for all the moving and shaking over here, but yeah, surrogacy, man. <laughs> it's pretty cool. The family seems pretty cool. Um, the agency's in a different state. So yeah, all the traveling and whatnot, uh, which I thought I was going to be doing with her soon, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen unless someone, no, actually, by the time this comes out, um, that decision would have already been made. So, uh, should have mentioned this last week, but, <laughs> but no, it's, it's fine. Um, it's probably easier if I'm here with the boy anyway. So yeah, uh, it's been, that part's been kind of weird with appointments and whatnot, and just trying to juggle childcare and me working and stuff. So that, that part kind of sucks, but just learning the whole process of how surrogacy works and how all these things and you know, the contract covers all kinds of stuff like, hey, if this happens, then we do this. And if that happens, we do this. And once you get to this point, we do this. And it's all, it's a lot. Um, I mean, I expect it to be involved. It's a, it's an agency. It's not just like a random person who called and said, hey, have my kid or whatever. But, you know, it's a lot of, um, a lot of T's to cross and I's to dot, right? Did I say that right? I said it at work the other day and I think I did it backwards. Like not on purpose. <laughs> But yeah, it's um it's really cool and you know, some of the money's already come, so that's really neat. And cuz you know, she's a stay-at-home mom, so she's like, "Hey, money for diapers. I don't have to bug you." Or like, "Money for I can pay for dinner today" or something like that. So just like little things like that and then you know, the bigger things come back and we'll get we'll, you know, cross that when we go to it and it's really it's really interesting. And the whole thing is like some people are a lot of people are excited, so thank you for that. I just chin butted the microphone. Some people obviously have some questions and concerns. Some people are, you know, not exactly comfortable with the whole thing, and that's fine. You don't have to be. It's not your uterus or your your family involved, and that's cool. But it's been really neat to go through the whole process and just kind of learn about how these things come together, and like we're learning about the family too, and they kind of want to learn with us. And because sometimes when people do this, it's just a transaction. It's just like nope, we don't want to really get to know each other. We don't want to continue this after. We just want to do the thing and then go our separate ways. And with us, it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, which is really cool. Like we can have new friends, I guess. Um, and yeah, there's going to be a connection with us and this kid, well, her specifically, and this new kid that's coming around with this family. So that's pretty cool. Um, I And they keep asking, like, how do you feel about this? I'm like, I'm on board. Whatever has to happen, let me know. If I got to watch the kid or whatever, let me know. We'll do it. Let's go. And um, yeah, it's been really cool just to sit back and kind of be like be involved, but not really. Like, cause I know, I know what's coming. She's going to be pregnant again. So we're going to have to, you know, handle some business that way and then appointments and all this stuff. So the only thing I will have to say that I'm concerned about is when it comes time for delivery. Because so when our kid was born, it was still like people still cared about COVID. And I know that sounds, I, I don't care how that sounds. That's what it was. That's, you know, I'm just basing it on things I see now versus a year ago, year and a half ago. So it was, you can have one person in the room with you and she chose me. Isn't that nice? She picked me to be there in the room. So now with this, I'm wondering, first of all, if I do go, who takes the kid? Because when you're there, 
you're not there. Like you're not in and out the same day. It's like two or three days. We were there three days, I think. And then, you know, what do I do about the kid for three days and then work and stuff like that. So that's one thing. And then the other part is it's not mine. Like I, I was there obviously when my kid was born, cause it's my kid and I'm there to support my wife giving birth to my son. So like, obviously I have a, a pretty, pretty good reason, pretty valid reason to be there, but this kid won't be my kid. And so I'm wondering, I think the plan is that the, the intended parents will be in town. Like when it's getting close to time, I think they're going to come to town and stay in town and go with her to the hospital and do all that. So I, so I don't have to, which makes it sound like I don't want to. And that's not the case. I'm just like, logistically, I just feel like it's going to be a nightmare. And that's the only part that I like everything else I can, like, we can kind of handle and I can, I can kind of, I know I'm making this about me, but it's my show. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Like, I can only speak from my perspective because Jill's upstairs with the kid taking a nap. So, or whatever they're doing up there. Um, so yeah, the only thing that I'm really concerned about at all is because we've met the people on Zoom. She met them. She went out, went out to the place last week or two weeks ago. So that's pretty cool. I don't think I'll get that opportunity. So that's kind of a bummer. But yeah, the only, everything else is just kind of, all right, just let me know when, when I have to do things. If I have to take the kid when you go a place or find someone to watch the kid when you go do a thing, I, you know, we'll figure that out. The only, yeah, the only worry, and I worry about a lot of things, if you don't know, is what happens when, when that comes, like when we're at the end of the process, right? Um, you know, fingers and toes crossed, it all goes well. Um, then what happens? Like who, who makes the decision on who gets to be in the room? Like the hospital might say, okay, you can have two people. And in which case, okay, the intended parents go right ahead. But then who, you know, it's a whole thing that we have plenty of time to kind of sort out. But, and I'm, I think the agency has a, has a plan in place with that, or maybe they already have. And I am not privy to that part of it, but cause I don't need to know right now, but it's, it's just something that, uh, the only thing I'm really worried about everything else, um, you know, appointments and medications and all that she's got, she's pretty well on top of all that stuff. So. And the agency handles a lot of that as well. So that's pretty cool to have an official, like, responsible party. Not to say that the missus is irresponsible, but, like, to have someone who knows when all these things have to be done by and just to say, hey, remember this thing. And then she's got a whole notebook of all the things that have to be done. So it's really cool. I'm really looking forward to the whole thing and the money, of course. But... <laughs> Like the whole thing was like, oh, are you, are you comfortable with this? I'm like, of course you're paying, you're paying how much? Like, of course. And I'm, you know, money is, let's put the money aside for a second, even though that's important, right? That's a, a reason to do the thing, right? Cause it's a lot of stress and work and all that, but really at the core of it, it's, you know, this family wants to have a kid that's theirs. And so, Hey, we're going to rent someone's uh, uterus there. And <laughs> Someone's going to say, Pat, that's the, the proper term. Is, I like saying the word uterus. Okay. Is that okay? Is that all right? Uteruses before deuteruses. Is that okay with you? Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm a f But anyway, yeah, so that's what's happening over here. Surrogacy, man. That is, it's something I didn't know anything about and didn't really have any hard opinion either way. Now that I'm kind of in it, tangentially, it's like, Hey, seems pretty neat. Like, you know, God bless. Good luck, everybody. Hope it works out for, for a number of reasons. You know, first of all, the health of my wife, um, second of all, the health of the kid. And then third, the money's in there somewhere. Right. So <laughs> I think I got out of that without having to, without saying anything I wasn't supposed to. I didn't mention anybody's name. So that's good. Um, yeah, I, I, I got permission to talk about it on the show because I've wanted to talk about it because it's just a whole process. It's very interesting to me, but also, uh, I was told I can't really get too specific. So I think I'm do. I think I did. Okay. We may cut all this out by the time I go to edit tomorrow, but I'm sure it's fine. Um, yeah. So long story longer. That's why the show schedule is weird lately because of appointments and travel and, things of that nature. So yeah, who knows? Um, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months from now, uh, we could be 
in an exciting and nerve-wracking spot. So who knows, spot? So when would that be? So eight, nine. Well, twelve is eleven, and then uh, back three has August, right? August, September, depending on on uh, when the medical things happen and if everything works. Next August or September, uh, we could be in a weird scheduling thing again. So we shall see. Cross that bridge again when we get there. But yeah, sir, I just think it's really cool. I really enjoy uh, just kind of learning about how this works and excited for the next step in the process. So yeah, if you have questions, let me know. And what I'll do is uh, I will ask, then ask Jill and she'll say, oh, well, this is how that works because she's busy with the kid and can't come on the show right now. So yeah, funnel them through me and uh, I will let you know. I will get check with her or read the contract if uh, it can be answered there and let you know. All right. So there you go. Um, I guess I'm trying to trying to make things more interactive. And I want to thank my buddy, Doug Corbett. I don't know if he listens to the show, but he and I worked together at Party 93.4. And he suggested years ago to have a question for the audience. That's why I do a lot of the questions of the week. It's because of his suggestion to be more interactive. And so what I try to do now, or what I'm going to try to do is when I end every little segment here is pose a question to see if we can get some people talking here. If someone, if you've been a surrogate or if you have used a surrogate or if you, uh, you know, someone, or if you like, if your wife was a surrogate or girlfriend or whoever, and you have been through this process, let me know. I want to know, like, what am I in for? What is the, what does the end of it look like? Um, are you just starting your journey too? You know, can we commiserate? Not commiserate, but can we uh, can we work through this together? Let me know. All right, everywhere at the Melting Pat, and um, yeah, it's it's really interesting, and that's why things are getting weird around here schedule wise. Okay, all right. So uh, we got a story for you real quick about uh, about Starbucks, but we are going to take a quick time out. I am thirsty once again, and it, it, breaking it up this way makes it easier to edit. So I'll be right back. All right. He did not think I was going to go like 20 minutes on surrogacy, but I guess there's a lot there and I had a lot to say. Wow. How about that? All right. Let's get into something that is not quite so serious. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's dumb, as <laughs> but it's not very serious. Starbucks workers. So this came out last year, but I missed it and it was making the rounds the other day. So I, I saw it for the first time on like Monday, um, a town in Connecticut, Trumbull, Connecticut, their Starbucks workers were ordered by like a town ordinance or a town something or other. The town council voted to make the workers at Starbucks work faster to get through the line. Cause the way the parking lot is designed up there, it wraps around and it's like, it's meant for, I don't know, 10 cars or so, or eight cars or something like that. And then, you know, rush hour in the morning or whenever people go to Starbucks, it wraps around in the parking lot and then spills out to the street. So it slows down and blocks up the street as well in the morning when people are trying to get to work. So they're like, Hey, we need a solution here. And I, so there are two ways you can do this. So there are three ways. The third way is the way they chose and it's the worst option, but one way, which would be more expensive for the town is to redesign the parking lot. To accommodate more cars. How you do that, I don't know. I'm not a city planner. But it's clear that the design in place is not efficient enough and doesn't work that well for all. The, like they maybe anticipated that not a lot of people would use the drive through Because I learned that across the street from this place, like across the shopping, across the highway, was another Starbucks that had no drive through and they were like, hey, people got by just fine without it. So like, why are we, why are we doing this? But then they built a new one in the other, in the shopping center across the way. And it has a drive through. It's causing problems. So option one is to redesign the, uh, the parking lot, redesign the throughway is the wrong word. Redesign the, you know, redesign the thing, redesign the line. So they could do that. That would take a lot of time and cost a lot of money. And then, you know, who knows if it actually works after you do all that. Okay, so there's one. You could do it. How? I don't know. But someone smarter than me could figure that out. Some kind of engineer or whoever can figure that out. Option two is you drive up to the store. You park there for a minute or two. You go in and grab it and you, you get out of there. 
right? Instead of idling your car and thinking that you're saving time by sitting in the car in the drive through for 20 minutes, you could park your car and get your thing faster because clearly a lot of people think that they're saving time by being in the drive through So how many of you would really go, oh, I'm not doing that because, you know, you think you're in your car in a drive through It's convenient, but when you're taking so long because of the congestion, like I have in my nose at the moment, I think I got it. I probably didn't, but it feels better. So <laughs> it just, I, I don't know, you know, you park and can you, can you not order ahead with Starbucks? Like, do they have an app? They have an app. I know that I don't drink Starbucks. I don't, I don't know. I don't drink coffee. So can you order ahead in the app and get it like a Grubhub or a DoorDash or whatever, and it could be sitting there in a little window waiting for you. Cause you do that with other places, other fast food places will do that. They will have like Wawa and Taco Bell will have a Grubhub, Uber Eats, whoever special area where all the stuff goes. So if you go in there, be like, Oh, Hey, that's my name. That's my stuff. I already paid. See you later. So I think Starbucks said their app, you can do that, right? Can you order ahead, pay for it already? And then, you know, you get a little boop, your thing's ready. And then you go park your car for two minutes, not even run in, grab it, and then go. Like, what is the the only difference between doing that and the drive through is that you have to get out of your car. So where we left off, I don't know. I said something stupid, and uh, patrons will figure out my how my brain just melted in real time. Um, so you can order. I think you can order ahead in the app and pay for it. You can do that with Taco Bell because I did one time. At the beginning of the pandemic, when nothing was really open, because uh, we didn't know what was going on, so I ordered ahead on the app. I paid ahead, and then just walked up to the drive-through window. And then I realized, then I learned I was not supposed to do that, and they weren't allowed to give me the food. They did, but they were like, "Please don't do this again. You're going to get us all in trouble." And I said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I really, I really did feel bad." But anyway, um, so if you can order ahead and pay. Through the app, what is stopping you from doing that, paying already, handling your business, running in to get your whatever it is, and then leaving? Like not waiting in the drive through going to Starbucks when your order is ready, and then getting it and getting back on the road. What is, and I get it, like not everyone can get out of the car and do that because you got kids in the car and all this other thing you have, you know. There are reasons why you can't get out of the, can't just run in and get the thing. I, I get it. I understand that that is a, uh, an issue, but I just, I'm not buying that every single person in that drive through line can't order ahead, pay in the app, and go in and get their thing. I'm not, I'm not buying that everyone who is causing this congestion at the shopping center and on this road is forced to use drive through. I'm not, I'm not buying it. I'm not like every, like, sure, let's, let's call it. Let's say it's 20 cars deep and let's say that five for whatever reason can't get out of the car quickly and they have to use drive through. All right. So that's 15 other cars that can stop, that can pay ahead, park and go into the place to get their thing when it's ready. So you've just alleviated the congestion right there. I just, I don't, I'm not buying it. I, I don't know that you can convince me that every single person who is going through a drive through absolutely must use the drive through and can't take two minutes, an extra two minutes to park and, or, you know, let's call it five minutes to park, go and grab the thing and get back on the road. You cannot convince me that they can't do that. You can, I'm just, I'm not like the, it's an, an, I think uh, I saw on Twitter, somebody put up on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. I don't want to download another thing, but, um, the guy was like, the illusion of convenience is insane. Like you can go in to the store and get your stuff and not just like you think because you're sitting in your car that it's convenient, but you're waiting three, four five times as long as you would than if you paid ahead and went in and got and picked up your order. And I know that there's a big, like a big hole in the argument. If you in fact cannot pay ahead in Starbucks app, I, I don't know that, but, and if I'm wrong, then that's fine. If that part is wrong, th so be it. But you can't tell me that you know, 15 people couldn't go in and order and deal with less of a line because everyone's in the drive-thru. You can't tell me that. Like, you can't tell me that the majority of those people 
absolutely positively must use the drive through. I'm not going to believe it. That's, that's where I'm sitting here. Like I don't always take a hard line on this stuff, but you can't convince me unless, you know, no, I didn't because like that every single person who is a part of this problem can't be the solution. Like can't use the solution of going into Starbucks to get their stuff. You can't, I, I do not believe it. All right. Anyway, is there anything else that I wanted to say? All right. Um, yeah, you think you're saving time sitting in your car. We did that illusion of convenience. It's just like the whole thing is just like, I see this a lot where it's, you know, the U S is dependent on cars for so much. That's why, you know, neighborhoods and things are kind of messy. Cause it's like, Hey, why don't we have walkable cities and stuff? And there are, but why aren't there more? It's like, well, because people need cars for some reason. So yeah. All right. Um, the point is I, I, do not believe that every single one of you using the drive through can't order ahead and go in and pick it up. I, I just, I, my brain can't make that connection. All right. And again, this all kind of goes to hell if you in fact <laughs> cannot pay ahead in the Starbucks app, but weren't they one of the first ones to do that? Use like Google pay or Apple pay or whatever, where you can pay ahead and pick up your stuff. Weren't they one of the first companies to do that with their app? I'm pretty sure that's true. All right, let me know. Again, I don't drink coffee or drive, so not really a big connection for me, but I saw people arguing about it, and hey, I want to get in on that. That sounds fun. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back, and we'll do some mail. All righty, we are back. We are back. That got kind of messy. It did. I'm well aware. I'm well aware that it got really messy there, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. So... Man, it's crazy. Episode 400, right? That's a lot. I will admit, I know this, the count is a little inflated because two years ago in November, I did uh, 24 extra episodes to do a show every day in November. And it was crazy. It was all Ben's idea. So if it sucked, uh, blame him. No, it was really fun. I, I won't, I don't think I'll ever have the time to do that again with, you know, work stuff and family stuff, but it was really fun. I'm glad I did it because I kind of, uh, a nice test for myself to see if I could actually do a daily show. And a lot of those were recorded ahead of time, I know. But if I had the time, like if I had, I don't know, an hour free every day to do it, then I probably could do a daily or a, a couple times a week with this. But I like the weekly. I've liked the weekly where I have, like, it's not always going to be timely, but I've kind of always enjoyed, like, here's the one day where, well, with the live show, like I do this on one day, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, whenever, Fridays at the very beginning. Um, I do it one day and then that's it. We're done. And now I have my, I try to keep to a pretty set schedule here where I record on Wednesday or Thursday and have it up for you by Saturday. And so kind of having that structure really helps, even though it doesn't always work out as we're going to learn in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy. I love doing this. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. I've met so many wonderful people through doing the show, through, you know, other people somehow hear the show or I tag somebody on Twitter about the show and they're like, hey, what about us? And that's how I have met some wonderful musicians and got to interview. Like I got to interview Paul McCoy from 12 Stones on this show, which is insane. And then fun fact so that came out on a, obviously on a Saturday, the next day I found out Joel was pregnant. So that whole week was like, oh my God, I just talked to, you know, the lead singer on my favorite bands. Like if that was a complete shot in the dark and a tweet. And then we get to the end of that week where the episode's out and then, oh, by the way, you're going to be a dad. It's like, oh Christ. Insane. A lot has happened with this show. Two moves, a kid. A number of pets. I don't know. I'll cut out the number. I'll cut out all that. Um, <laughs> and so many fun conversations. Uh, I just updated the list the other day of the interviews. I've done 42 of them. Not 42 separate people or bands, but the fact that anybody has taken time out of their day to sit down with me and talk about their music things or wrestling or uh, when Maggie came to the living room and poured her heart out about her book. Uh, Maggie, we love you. You know this, but I know you'll listen. So there we go. 
um, you know, Joel and Phil come to the living room and do that. And our, our mystery man did another thing. And just having people on the show, like I had Charlie Saxton in my apartment, which was nuts. And his dad came. It was crazy. Um, that was really fun. And like if I hadn't done the podcast, I don't meet Danny Schmitz. And if I don't meet Danny Schmitz, the album doesn't get done. Danny Schmitz produced the Attic Sessions, the album that uh, that we worked on for a long time. Um, and all of that, plus a whole bunch of other things, like all of that happened because of the podcast. And... I'm forever grateful to all of you. If you listen once and decide, hey, you're an idiot, I'm not going to listen anymore, that's fine. You checked it out, and I appreciate the the time. If you've ever come on the show via a voicemail or a, or a text or uh, you answered a question or you sat down with me uh, for any length of time, I greatly appreciate all of that and uh, kind of can't believe that people are people do this. Like, it's crazy because I'm like, who like, who am I to everyone else? I'm just a guy saying stuff, right? I don't have a, a massive following. I just kind of sit in my own little pocket of the internet and hope that somebody hears what I'm saying. And if I can make you laugh, if I can make you learn something, if I can make you, uh, make you think a little bit, I don't, I don't know. That sounds weird, but if in some way I can, uh, I can affect your life, hopefully positively, um, and I think I've done the job. Like I got a review years ago on the live show where they said, Hey, it sounds like you're sitting down having a conversation with your buddies. And that is the ultimate compliment for this show. And that's kind of what I have always tried to make it. I've always tried to make it sound like we're just sitting here talking about stuff. Like I, like someone is bringing up like, Hey, Pat, you hear about this? And I just go on a thing. Right. Or if like, Hey, what's going on with you? And I talk about surrogacy for 20 minutes. Right. And I just kind of go and just handle things that way. And that's kind of how I've always approached the show is let's try and figure out how we can, I don't know, let's talk about baseball. Let's talk about this. Let's do this. Like, let's just have a conversation, you and me, even though it's just me to you from my basement. And it's just, it's insane that, you know, and the numbers aren't great. I won't lie to you. I'm not getting, you know, thousands of downloads a week, but I think I read this tweet not too long ago where it said, yeah, everybody kind of scoffs at small numbers, but if you had 60 people come up to you on the street and say, Hey, I liked your show. Like if you get 60 likes on a tweet, or let's say like 30, 30 likes on a tweet or 30 downloads or whatever. And you're like, Oh, that's like nothing. But if you had 30 people come up to you on the street and say, Hey man, I like your show or Hey, that's a funny joke. Like you'd be overwhelmed with that. And so that perspective was really important for me to learn. And so I, all that to say, I don't care how many of you listen. Uh, I just appreciate every goddamn one of you, the fact that you're here for any length of time at all to listen to me spew stuff out of my face. Uh, it means the world to me. And thank you very much. And anybody I've ever played on the show, music, and uh, if you've come on the show or anything like that, if you've ever uh, connected with me through this show at any point uh, for any reason at all, even if it's to say, hey, hey, you suck. Um, thank you. I, re <laughs> I sincerely do appreciate that. All right. You know what we're going to do, though? We got some mail. This episode has gone really long. So we're going to make the sports a bonus. We're gonna, you know what? We're gonna make the sports a ah oh, damn, I really wanted to talk about. It. We're gonna push it. We don't have to we don't have to do all the sports today. We're gonna push the uh, the Hall of Fame voting thing to uh to a couple weeks because that vote's not coming yet. So uh quick change on the fly. But we got some mail. That's why we're here. That's why I started this. I wanted to gush and then read some mail. So thank you for all of these, by the way. They came in over the last, I don't know how many number of weeks, but I'm just getting to them now. So there you go. It's fine. Uh, Pat, how do you do a solo show anyway? Um, this comes up a lot. This has come up a ton over the years of like, I don't know how you hold an audience for that long. And well, the answer to that part is I don't know if I'm holding them the whole time. I don't know if anybody checks out after five minutes. But um, again, I thank you for staying here if you're still here. But yeah, the, the solo show thing, like I, it's not something I really kind of prepared for. I just did it. Like I was doing... Uh, I was co-hosting in college and then one day, um, Brian couldn't make the sports show. So I did one on my own. It was, uh, April 12th, I believe 2010. And, uh, it was horrifying, but it was really fun. And then I'd, I had done some wrestling show a few times by myself and that was really horrifying, but also fun. And then I did a music show the following semester. I, maybe it was 2009. No, had to be 10. Anyway, then I did a music show by myself and that could have gone better, but it was also a good test for me to see if I could do it like a, 
music show slash talk show, but that was mostly music anyway. And so then I decided like, hey, I want to combine all these into one show. And that's how the Melting Pat became a thing. And then I just did that on Party 93.4 and it was rough around the edges for sure. Um, but I just, how do you do it? I just keep doing it. At this point, like I'm long over the fear of, oh, I hope somebody likes this or anybody listens. Like I'm long past that. It took me a while to get there, but like to get to that point, but I'm well past like, what if nobody listens? Like, I don't care. At this point, I'm having fun. Like, like I said, the ultimate compliment for this show is that it sounds like you're just chatting with your buddies. And that's, that's the approach I always have. And so once I get into that mindset of like, I'm just having a conversation with somebody or everybody, that's it. I just, I turn on the microphone and let's go. And that's it. So yeah. How do I do it? I know that's not, I don't think that's a great answer to the question, but I've just been doing it. Like I've, I started doing radio in 2008 and pretty much never stopped. And so at this point, it's just, it's part of what I, it's part of who I am really. Like I, I've made a little bit of money with this stuff. Um, I'm not going to call myself a pro on any level, but you know, you learn things along the way and you just kind of keep up with what you got going on. And it's like, that's basically what it is. Like the solo show, the melting pad has been a thing since 2011. And it's just been, that's me. It's just been me the whole time. So like, that's kind of what I've, what I've kind of carved out for myself, this little, uh, little niche, like I said, in my pocket of the internet here, and it's been really fun. So yeah. How do I do it? I just, lots of practice, lots of practice. There we go. How's that? Uh, Pat, are you planning to make another album? I want to hear you try to make a happy song. Well, God damn it. Thank you for that. I want to try that too. I also want to write some happy songs. That would be fun. Um, we're not planning another album right now. I have some bits and pieces of songs sitting around that I'm kind of uh, waiting to get some time to actually record some demos to send to the guys. But as of right now, no, um, no plans for another album. Uh, I think if we were going to do anything, it would be singles. And then maybe at some point when we can all get together at some time down the line is re-record the album for all of us as we originally planned. But that's not on the radar. It's just a thing we've thought about. Uh, and as far as anything new, not yet. But I think the plan would be release singles as they come. Uh, but as of right now, not in the cards because timing. That's just that's always it. Timing. Um, so not right now. But thank you. I'm glad you liked the other one. Uh, Pat, do you have any regrets with the show? Yes. I wish that I had thought many years ago that when I had guests to make that the whole episode. Cause I remember I did a couple, um, where I did an interview or I did a, I did like half a show and then did the interview. And I wish I had pushed all that stuff to another show and just had the interview like I do now, which I just figured out like this year, um, to just do the interview and like, here's the show. It's a conversation with this person about the stuff. And then the song, I wish that I had done that from the beginning. It would have made things easier. Um, I wish I'd known about like noise removal and leveling because it would have saved me a lot of time editing. I wish I'd known that from the beginning. Um, yeah, I wish I had structured the show differently from the jump because I like it's improved markedly, marketedly is Mark. Is that how you say that? I wish I learned how to speak. That's a thing too. Um, yeah, I, I wish I would have been able to. Like I didn't have the equipment or the money to buy it at the beginning, but I wish I would have known a little bit more about the process and it would have saved me a lot of time. Um, but yeah, really the biggest one is not making early interviews the sole episode, like not making the interview just the whole episode. I wish I would have done that from the beginning. I'm glad to do it now, but I wish I would have done that from the start because it would have been would have been a lot better, a lot cleaner with the stuff. And uh, I think it would have been, um, I think it was a little unfair of me to do that. Unfair to the artist of me to do that, but didn't know any better. Now I do. And no one complained really. It's just a, it's a decision that I made. Um, I just decided, Hey, let's try this. Uh, and it, it's worked, I think. So yeah. Um, someone years ago asked me about dream guests and I've not had any of them on. I've not even tried to reach out. So that's kind of a bummer, but now I don't really have time to do anything. So <laughs> maybe it's for the best. Uh, maybe it's Maybelline. I'm going to get sued. But yeah, the regret, the big one is not not structuring the show differently from the beginning. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. And finally, 
Pat, what's a weird truth that you believe? Wow. I love this question. I've actually thought about this for a little while. Uh, I didn't know how to bring it up, so I'm glad you did. So a weird truth that I believe. I believe that evolution is not real for a very specific reason, and that is that there is no goddamn way that humans would still have any use for nose hair. Yeah, that's true. I think we don't evolve. We're not evolved species because yeah, because at this point we would have evolved past nose hair. That's what I believe. That's a weird thing I believe. There you go. You asked. There it is. No, uh, there's no way we would still have nose hair if we uh, if we were the final form. Although then, does that raise the question? What if we're not the final form? And if so, how do we get there? But the weird truth that I believe is that evolution is not real because we still have nose hair. And I think it's... So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for the questions. Um, if I got any messages from anybody, I'll put them at the end of the show here. I don't know if they have any now. But um, thank you very much. 209-867-7638. Texts, uh, voicemails, all that stuff. Let me know if you have any other questions. I would like to... Uh, I'd like to answer them. I'd like to hear from you too. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Right? Wouldn't it? If you're not comfortable with it, that's fine. But that'd be fun. So there you go. There's me gushing about episode 400. So if you don't like sports, you can get out of here. I thank you for being here. You're great. I love you. Thank you for taking any small part in this show. I appreciate it. All right. Let's do sports and then uh, and then we'll go. Okay. So it turns out we don't have time to do all the sports stuff, but that's all right. I, gotta, I, I just remembered that at the day that I'm doing this. Tomorrow's an off day, so I won't be able to edit the show. So instead, here's what we'll do. <laughs> We're going to just run through real quick. I wrote about the Phillies. It's at the website. There are actually two um, two pieces on there, themeltingpat.com, about the end of baseball season and how the Fox broadcast covered or rather not covered the Astros stuff. Anyway, Phillies didn't win the World Series. Disappointing, but hell of a run. And uh, we'll see. Coming up on free agency stuff, I believe it's now started. So we'll see what happens if they spend some more money. And I don't know what's gonna what they're going to do, but I'll uh, keep you updated. Also, uh, one of these days I will talk about the, what is it, Contemporary Baseball Era Committee. There are some names that are now eligible again for the Hall of Fame, so we'll talk about that um, when I have some time. But that's not going to be today. So our game of the week I want to mention before we go is... Vikings Bills or Bills Vikings, whichever one of Minnesota Buffalo. Those are the teams that are playing, and that's the one that I picked. I think it's in Buffalo. Does it really matter? Is anybody listening even in my game of the week thing? I don't know. But anyway, there's your game. Bills <laughs> Bills Vikings for week 10. And uh that's just about our show. I do, however, want to turn it over to the captain who's gonna let us know what's going on with the fly guys. I hope. Or if not, then um I don't know. Then we'll just play a little sound effect or something, and then we'll get out of here sooner. All right? So, good sir, the floor is yours. Take it away. And we say thank you, my friend. Maybe he made fun of me. Maybe he wasn't there at all. Maybe he just was professional, as he is, and talked about the fly guys. I don't know. The Melting Path, the Next Level Network, that's what I do know. That's where we are. And we are uh, we're at the end of the rope here. So, thank you for joining me. Um, this has been wonderful. This All of these episodes... As awkward as they sound and as, as poor as the quality is, certainly compared to what I'm doing now, um, this show has been fantastic, and I can't wait to do four or 500 more of these. Uh, so long as Ben decides to keep me on the server, uh, I will be here every Saturday doing things and whatnots, or, uh, you know, in the case of Thanksgiving Thursday, um, and we'll be having some fun with that, all right? Yeah, having some fun. Yeah. All right. I got to go do stuff. Thank you for being here. We're good, right? Nothing else. I was. I usually, when I say, hey, thanks for the song, but we didn't have time for that. So we're good. This has been an 8 point in production. Until next time, my friends, have fun. Be safe. Thank a veteran. Wear your mask, wash your hands, get vaccinated and boosted when you can. And of course, don't do anything I wouldn't do. g Love and Special Sauce with Cold Beverage. They're going to play us out as they always do. Philadelphonic.com for more from them. TheMeltingPat.com for more from me. We're good. That's it. That's a wrap for episode 400. Uh, again, thank you so much for being here. If you've ever contributed in any way to this show, even if it says, hey, hey, you suck. Did I make that joke already today? I don't know. I'm doing this on separate days, and by the magic of editing, it's all going to be one thing. But thank you very much. I'll talk to you next week. We may have guests, I hope. If it works out, I hope we have guests. If not, 
I don't know what's going to happen. But until then, you know the drill, all right? Thanks for being here. Go have fun. Don't be a moron. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Thanks. You've been inside the Melting Pat on the Next Level Network. Go crap open a cold one. Mm -hmm.